Just imagine what a difference 50 years can make. Take a look at New York in 1880. What a peaceful scene. What calm dignity. What quaint charm. It is so quiet you can even hear the rustle of the bustle. Lovely. No traffic problem in those days. The aged pedestrian was absolutely safe. See? What politeness. Thank you. In those days, they did not have electric lights, telephones, radios, wireless, automobiles, or airplanes. Ah. But they did have this. Well, who can tell? Maybe he forgot something. Just imagine. The people in 1880 thought they were the last word in speed. Take a look at the same spot today. Good old Fifth Avenue. Changed a bit, hasn't it? Ah, here's an adventurous soul. Going to do a little jaywalking, eh? Be careful. Take it easy. Watch yourself. He made it. No, he didn't. If the last 50 years made such a change, just imagine the New York of 1980, when everyone has a number instead of a name, and the government tells you whom you should marry. Just imagine 1980. How are you, darling? Hello, J21. Well, it happened today. What? Whereas you, J21, and MT3, have both filed intention of marriage to LN18. In such a case, the tribunal must decide between the applicants from a standpoint of their worth and accomplishments. The tribunal has decided in favor of MT3. Now therefore you, J21, will from this day forward Cease all attention to said LN 18 as required by the law, section 10, paragraph 6. The tribunal takes notice and records your appeal, which will come before us September the 1st, 1980. this was going to happen. So was I. Oh, well, why did you ever consent to his filing an application? It was father's idea. And besides, I didn't know then that I was going to meet you. What are we going to do about it? I'll see you tonight and we'll talk it over. Oh, you mustn't, Jay. It's too dangerous. Get out of there. Don't you know you can only park there three minutes? 
All right. Don't forget, I'll be over tonight. Oh, you mustn't, Jack. But I hope you will. Goodbye. Goodbye. matter with you? Oh, nothing. I know, it's LN18. You better try to forget about her, Jay. Easy advice, you lucky stiff. Nobody's trying to marry your girl. It's simple for you. Someone's at the door. See who it is. Some official. How I hate these modern women. Let her in. I'm the census taker. I'm sorry, but we're out of our census today. <laughs> now, will you have a drink? I don't drink. Cigarette? I don't smoke. Well, I'll bet you play a great game of football. How many live here? Three, if you count K-9. Two. Male or female? What do you think? Male. Good. Go to the head of the class. Who were your parents? Uh, General Electric. We're both incubator babies. Young man, you are very impudent. Have a little respect for the law. The law? How can I respect it? It's ridiculous. The marriage law, for instance. It's robbed me of the only girl I can ever love. Was your application turned down? Yes. Did you appeal? Yes, it comes up in four months. And that gives you four months to distinguish yourself over your rival. How can I? I've reached the top in my line now. I'm an air pilot on a transatlantic liner. Everything that can be done in aviation has already been done. How can I distinguish myself in four months? Mm, that's your affair. But don't criticize this marriage law. It, like the Volstead Act, is a noble experiment. I don't get it. Why, you men have all the best of it. For instance, you can file an application to marry me, which I can accept or reject. But I can't put in an application to marry you. Not a bad law at that. Oh! I know it's a terrible thing to suggest, Jay. But can't you find some other girl? No, it's no use, Hardy. I like a girl like my grandmother used to be. That's why I like Ellen. She's an old-fashioned girl. I should have lived back in 1930. What? With those slow pokes?
Pardon me if I seem high hand to the girl who now holds sway, but I have to take off my hand to the girl of yesterday. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I admire so the type that blossomed fifty years ago. There's something about an old fashioned girl that brings back the long, long ago. My heart sings the praise of a whole lovely ways and envies her old fashioned bow. The modern girl I know would be glad to have the charm that my grandmother had. So you paint the town while I settle down with an old fashioned girl that I know. To set it, boy. Can't you just picture them? Something about an old fashioned girl that brings back the long and long ago. My heart sings the praise for the lovely way and envies her old fashioned The modern girl I know would be glad to have the charm that my grandfather had. You came to the town while I settled down with an old fashioned girl. I guess I'll call up my old-fashioned girl. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> I always forget to shut that thing off. It's all right with me. <laughs> I thought you were going to take me to see that medical experiment today. Doesn't it come off in 15 minutes? I'll be right over, darling. Uh oh, you got a hole in your stocking. I don't wear any stockings. That's my vaccination. What medical experiment? Well, her boss, Dr. X-10, is trying to bring a man to life who's been dead for 50 years. I'd like to see that. Okay, come along. <laughs> it might cheer you up a bit. Sorry I was so long getting here. How are you, sweet? Hello, Dee. Greetings, Dave. Well, how do you like my new dress? It's a brand new model. It's called a stay out. Stay out? Mm -hmm. You see, if you fly over to Paris some afternoon and you want to stay out for dinner, presto. Maybe I'm too young to watch this. I think you're too old to get any reaction. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, Dee. Wait, that's not all. Now, how do you like me? <laughs> Come on, Jay, or we'll be late. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to 
help a woman pull herself together? Wait, will you? Hello, T. Hello, dear. Tell me, baby, who is this bird the doc's trying to bring back to life? Oh, someone that was playing golf for way back in 1930 and was hit by lightning right in the middle of his backswing. <laughs> do you think the doc can do it? I doubt it. By the look of this guy, he was dead even when he was alive. <laughs> well, what does he look like? Well, um, do you know uh, Pellegrino, the picture star? Yes. Well, he looks like his dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to get into my uniform. Go on in or you'll miss the show. Okay, honey. How do you feel? Oh, great. <laughs> How you been? Where am I? What's happened? You were struck by lightning. Oh, I, I better take a shower and get home. Wait a minute. You were struck by lightning in 1930. This is 1980. <laughs> 1980. <laughs> you were fooling me. <laughs> Gentlemen, 1980. The experiment is a success. <laughs> That's a good you can't get away with this. If what you say is true, what are you going to do with me? I'm through with you. To me, you were just an experiment. Well, you brought me to life. What's going to happen to me now? If you're unhappy, I can kill you again. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. That, that's all right, Doctor. <laughs> I, I used to look around a little bit. <laughs> the poor chump. Maybe we should offer to take care of him. What for? Probably be a terrible nuisance. Well, what of it? I think we should do it at that, Artie. All right. Say, pal, we know you haven't any place to go. Maybe you'd like to live with us for a while, until you get settled. Oh, don't worry about me. Can you direct me to the Elks Club? Well, that won't do you any good. Why not? Well, don't you realize they put you out 49 years ago for not paying your dues? That's right. I'm not a milk. Oh, don't take it so hard. You come along with us. Thanks, old man. My, my, my name is Peterson. That name's no good to you now. We all have numbers. Numbers? So where can I get a number? And how much is that? Well, they're all given out and set aside for future generations. How about single O or maybe double O? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has those, of course. Oh, that's fine. Then shake hands with old single O. <laughs> <laughs> if you've really decided you 
want to live, I'm delegated to keep you alive. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> How? With a shot every three hours until you're acclimated. Bend over. Now. Not dead. <laughs> He's alive, all right. <laughs> well, boys, I'll see you later. <laughs> okay, Dee. <laughs> Tell us, Singlo, what do you want to do? What do you say we show him the town? That's great. Let's go. <laughs> all right, come <laughs> on. You know, I hope you get it. <laughs> Boys, I wouldn't know the old town. There is all the automobiles. Oh, they're on the upper level. Oh, but hardly anybody drives a car now. They all use planes. Is that so? Yes, I fly a Rosenblatt. Had a yes. Tannenbaum last year. Jay flies a Pincus for his personal use. But all the airliners are gold farms. Gold farms? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks like someone got even with Henry Ford. <laughs> Say, boys, how about a little lunch? You know, I haven't eaten in 50 years. Sure. There's a cafe there. There? Yeah. Come on. Well, what will you have? Table d'hote or a la carte? Oh, I used to take the regular dinner. Okay. Here you are. Clam chowder, roast beef, beets, asparagus, pile of mold and coffee. How does that sound? <laughs> oh, that's fine. Okay. You know, I love roast beef. Yeah? Here you are, boy. Wrap yourself around that. Eat it. Go ahead. Well, how was it? The roast beef was a little bit tough. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the way you eat now. I must admit that it satisfies me, but back in 1930, a meal was a meal. You could see the thick steak with the juice oozing out, and you could feel the cold cream going down. There was something true eating then. I don't know, boys. Give me the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. By the way, boys, what is the prohibition situation now? Well, it looks like in a year or two we're going to get light wines and beer. Ah, for heaven's sake, are they still saying that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can fix you up if you'd like a little highball. Now you're coming right down my street. Here you are. What? More pills? Uh, don't worry. They've got plenty of kick. Well, here goes. How was that? <coughs> not bad, not bad. But back in my time, we would get the big cold Steiner beer with the foam on the top. <sighs> ah, it was a pleasure. There was something to drinking then. I don't know, boys. Give me the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's going on there? We've been married a year now, dear. I think we're gonna fun. I think so, darling. What do you want, a boy or a girl? A boy. <laughs> Give me the good old days. <laughs> Won't you reconsider? They say it's a great show. Yes, daughter. Please come along. No. I'd be miserable company with this splitting headache. Well, it came on very suddenly, I must say. <laughs> ah. Here, dear, take your medicine.
Come empty. I hope that medicine will fix you up all right. Good night. I hope that medicine fixes you up all right. Uh, good night. Mothers ought to tell their daughters never, never wed. Mothers ought to warn their daughters shun the marriage bed. It ain't no sin to take off your skin, but keep your sunny side up. Woohoo! Hey, stand up. Here, you've had enough to drink. Give me that bottle. Oh, leave me alone. I'm the only guy that ever celebrated his first birthday. Woohoo! Will you please be quiet? Jay's calling on his girl, and it's dangerous. Now you wait here till we get back. But that? That's a street lamp. There's the post. They don't have posts anymore. Oh, that's too bad. You know, I could use one of those right now. <laughs> Steady. Stand up. What's Come on. Here? Let me have some more pills before you go. There you are. Now take care of yourself. Yeah, take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. I'm going to be all right. Sweet Adeline, my Adeline. Shh, be quiet. <laughs> Hello, baby. Did this have to happen to us? They say everything might be worse, and maybe it's true. When you're in my arms, I feel I could conquer the world. I'll find some way to distinguish myself. As far as I'm concerned, you're more distinguished than he is right now. You've really accomplished something. All he's done is publish that old paper his father left him. But the tribunal doesn't see it that way. The tribunal doesn't know anything about love. Love is beautiful when the loved ones are together. But it's terrible when they're apart. Love is like a song, they say, but dear to have a song. You've got to have the music and words that flow along words and tunes must be combined or songs could never be and what is true of every song applies to you and me i am only the words, you are the melody, and we need the two to make a song of love. Tell me what good are words without a melody, they are like an earth without a song. 
sun above Although my words are sweet The music's in your heart A song can't be complete If we keep the two apart But when my words are wedded to your melody Then the world will hear a perfect song of love I am only the words, you are the melody Oh, Jay, what are we going to do? I wish I knew does seem hopeless. Kiss me. You poor dear. I'm so sorry for you. But after all, it's much worse for me. What? How? Of course it is. You don't have to marry him. Kiss me. We could run away. But there's no place to run to. They'd only bring us back. Oh, Jack, I love you so. And if it's any comfort to you, I love you always. And when my words are wedded to your melody, kiss, kiss me. Then the world will hear a perfect song of love. <laughs> oh boy, there's nothing like an old-fashioned girl. <laughs> Where's Artie? He's hiding. Then you hide. You mustn't be caught here. No, I'll face him. Oh, Jay, don't be stubborn. Do it for my sake, please. Come on. told you you were wrong. There's no one here. What's the matter with you, MT3? You know very well that LN has always been a fine, upright girl. How dare you be suspicious? Why, no one comes up here but you. Well, I guess I was wrong. But who wouldn't be jealous of a little darling like my LN? Come, A.K., let's go to the show. Good night. Good night. Hey, there's Jay. We don't know any Jay. Uh, uh, and anyway, he's not here. Oh, he is so, too. I used to climb up here. I don't want to take him away. I only want to buy a few more pills. Hiya, boy. 
So, Ellen has always been a fine, upright girl, above suspicion, eh? If you have anything to say, say it to me. Take it easy, M.T., take it easy. I have plenty to say to you. Ah, that completes the foursome. I uh, suppose you know what can happen to you for coming here. Oh, M.T., please don't report him. I do anything you say. Never mind, Ellen. Let him report me if he wants to. I'm not going to report him, dear. Only this mustn't happen again. Tell him so. Go on, dear. Tell him. This mustn't happen again, Jack. That's fine. Now tell him to go, dear. You better go, Jack. Good night. And it's for you. You handle that beautifully, M.T. You know, I've yet to find the situation that I can't handle. I guess I combed everything up, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, you certainly did. I told you to stay down here and be quiet. Never mind, Artie. It's all over now. Forget it, single old. It doesn't matter. Oh, come on, Jay, let's go home. You boys go along. I want to take a walk by myself. He feels pretty bad, doesn't he? Maybe we better stick with him. Oh, he'll be all right, I guess. So women are still causing trouble. You would think in 50 years they could have found a good substitute for them. Oh, come on, let's go home. Isn't it so? Who are you? How do you know this? Your youth tells me. Going to end it all, weren't you? No, I wasn't. But it's not a bad idea. You're just the man I'm looking for. I can give you your heart's desire. Who are you? What does it mean? I can solve your problem. And if that is true, it's worth the chance. Isn't it? Trust me. Come.
It is your man. Sit down. Will you introduce yourself, sir? J-21. Pilot on the airliner Pegasus. So much the better, J-21. I am Z-4. Z-4? The great inventor? I hope the number inspires your confidence. You will need it when you learn my strange proposition. Thousands of years ago, man wondered what was across the river. Then he went over and found out. Later, Columbus wondered what was across the ocean. And he went over and found out. Since then, men have sought for and learned every secret of the earth. On the land, in the water, in the air. But there is one secret, the greatest of all, that remains a mystery. And that is? The planet Mars. They have said such a venture is impossible. But they said that to Columbus, to Perry, to Lindbergh. Yes? I have built a plane, foolproof, that will make the trip to Mars and return. It needs a man. A brave man. Are you the one? Why should I be? Why should I fly your plane to Mars? For the same reason that I have spent five years perfecting it. For humanity. Humanity? What has humanity done for me? It's robbed me of the only girl I can ever love because I'm not distinguished enough to marry her. Then you are the man. Because if you successfully make this trip, you will be the most distinguished man in the world. That's right. How long would it take? Three months and 25 days. That allows five days upon the planet Mars itself. Great. I could be back in time. I'll do it. Not so fast. Let me warn you that you may never get back. We don't know if man can live upon the planet Mars, but it's worth the chance, isn't it? You bet it is. The plan is absurdly simple. One thing only makes it possible. My greatest invention, the gravity neutralizer. With the speed of the Earth's motion and the rocket attachment, the plane will have sufficient momentum to make the trip. And where is the plane? In a secluded place in the hills. I will take you there tomorrow. You will leave in eight days at 4 a.m. My calculations are made for that time. Young man, our interview is at an end. Thank you. My troubles are over. I've found a way out. Congratulate me. Why, what's happened? I'm going to Mars. You've been drinking. You're going to bed. Come on. I know. You're going to tell me what they told Perry, Columbus, and Lindbergh. Say, what's this all about? Z-4 has invented a plane that'll go to Mars, and I'm going to fly it. Z-4? Well, that's different. When do we start? You? You want to go along? Hey, boy, you're not going any place without me. Wait a minute. This is no tea party. There's only a bare chance that the plane will make it. Why should you take the risk? 
Well, there's one big reason, Jay. We've been pals. Real pals. Ever since we were little kids. Why, we've gone through everything together. There's no reason why we should stop now. If you go, I go. All right, kid. I'll try and fix it tomorrow. We'll go together. Okay, boy. Where are we going now? You're not going any place. We're going to Mars. Oh, take me with you. I'd like to meet your mother. <laughs> Here she comes with her can of flit. Don't tell me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, boys, you're the only ones who know where we're going. I must ask you to keep it a secret until the news breaks in the morning papers. In conclusion, let me thank you again for this great honor you have bestowed on us. I know of no finer way that we could have spent our last night on Earth. And it is our last night on Earth for four months at any rate. Thank you. How about leading our old drinking song, Jay? Yeah. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. Three, one, two. One time more, raise your glasses high, as before, raise your glasses high. Mm -hmm. One we all on hold. Even though we're tight tonight, there's time for one more toast. Come on and drink. my new suit. Not bad. What's that bulge on your right hip? 
that? Ammunition. I'm not going to get caught short again. <laughs> well, take care of yourself. You bet. Hurry up, Dee. I can only stay half an hour longer and I haven't seen Jay yet. Oh, Dee. Do you think they'll tell us tonight where they're going? I've been pumping single O, but I can't get any information out of him. All Jay will tell me is that what he's doing is for my sake. Well, I'll find out what that tailspin of mine is up to or I'll know the reason why. Come on, Keith. Perhaps we can induce D6 and RT42 to sing a little song for us. Well. <laughs> Every little creature on this earth that has a mate Once I hated crickets, I couldn't stand a bee Now here is the motto that I follow faithfully Never swat a fly, he may love another fly he may sit with her and sigh the way I do with you. Never harm a flea. He may have a favorite sheep that he bounces on his knee the way I do with you. Never stop a bee if he is going anywhere. Why, you may be concluding some terrific love affair. Be careful, don't step on an ant, the middle of a pan. He may want to, but he can't the way I do with you. I'm the same as you are. Tears come to my eyes when I see professors chasing helpless butterflies. Fishermen are hateful. They lead a wicked life. Why, every day if they separate the husband from his wife. Never swat a fly. He may love another fly. He may sit with her and die the way I do with you. Never spray a mist with a great big cat of flip. He may think Thank you. 
Must you go so soon? Yes. I must get home before Father does. Nothing ever happens in life as you hope it will, does it? I pictured us saying our goodbyes alone together in some faraway place. It would have meant so much to me that way. Oh, Jack, I don't like the sound of that. Won't you tell me where you're going? What you're going to do? Don't ask me, darling. Just believe that what I'm doing is the best for both of us. Please trust me. And another thing. Above all, this mustn't be a set. We must be happy. Because when I see you again, all our dreams will have come true. I'll try, Jack. Come, dear. Smile. That's it. Now. This is for you. It explains everything. But you mustn't read it until after four o'clock tomorrow morning. Promise me that. Goodbye, Jay, darling. I'll be waiting for you. like I sang in Porterville way back in 1930. <laughs> His name was Elma Streming Ray. Her name was Fanny Lee. A farmer boy. A farmer girl. And he said, marry me. Alas, she cried, I love you so, but I cannot do that. My father made me promise I would marry Silas Pratt. Elma said, that must not be, for Silas is a rat. I won't give up my Fanny, you will never be a Pratt. You then poor Fanny's folks drove up and took them by surprise. And with him sat old Silas Pratt with anger in his eyes. The girl said, Oh! And Pratt said, So! Her dad said, Go! The girl said, No! No! The boy said, Wait! I must obey! And sadly walked away. A week has passed. The scene has changed. It's now the month of spring. The preacher baits the tide in that fire starts to sing. Beside the older Silas Pratt is waiting with a smile. His fanny down the aisle. Now Pratt repeats the word. I do. Now Fanny does the same. The preacher reads while Fanny prays. Oh, save me from my shame. Then suddenly a voice rings out from an old familiar face. Tis the running way who holler stay. This wedding can't take place. The preacher stops and Silas scowls. Then Silas moves over the hole. Then Silas cries, what does this mean? And Alma then did say, I just come back from Pumpkinville where living on the flats. I found your poor deserted wife and seven little brats. The villain, with a snarl of rage, went down in from the room. The ceremony then continued, with Elmer as the groom. So Elmer got his fanny, and happy to this day, lived fanny and her ma, and her pa, and Elmer's dreaming way.
That's all I can tell you, gentlemen. How do you do? How do you do? I am MT3, publisher of the Clarion. I thought this was important enough for me to appear personally. It's even more important than that. I've checked the time with the both observatories, sir. You have 12 minutes and 13 seconds exactly. Fine. One moment, J-21. What do you want? Only to offer you my best wishes for a successful trip. Do you mean that? Why, of course. I think you're going to make it. And I'm pulling for you. Au revoir. Thanks. Do you really think he's going to make a chief? Of course not. He'll break his fool neck. I hope. Take this little book, my boy. It contains all the calculations for your return. And now, Godspeed and good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Back, gentlemen. A little more, please. Goodbye. God bless you. Goodbye, sir. Well, we're off. There's one satisfaction anyway. No one ever went this fast before. I but I'm black and blue from the shock of that start. Didn't bother me a b b b b b bit. Oh boy. How you think I feel? Single O. You didn't think you could lose me, did you? I stole away. Yes, stole away. What you gonna do about it? Well, as long as you're here, you're welcome. How's that sight? And it's a sight no one's ever seen before. Take a look at it, Ali. Oh, boy! Can't even see Mars yet. <laughs> I wish you boys would tell me something. Where does Ma live? And whose mother is it? It's the planet Mars. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fine time to tell me. <laughs> well, now that you know where we're going, I guess you're sorry you're with us. No, I'm not, boy. My wife and little son aren't with me anymore. You boys is all I got. And besides, I'm getting away from those injections. Say, <laughs> <laughs> hey, ain't anybody steering this thing? No one has to steer it. The flight of this plane was adjusted on this dial by the inventor. Oh! I hope his aim was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
There it is. We're going to hit it, all right. Feel the pull of the gravity. If we hit the air at this speed, we'll burn up. We're coming into it. Give us a reverse rocket, Tony. Okay. That ought to slow her up. We got over that hurdle, all right. Now release the wings and pull off the gravity neutralizer. Now for a happy landing. Oh, I got my fingers crossed. Looks like a good place right ahead. Oh, go easy, easy. So this is Mars. We got a spot like this three miles from my hometown. You should be on it. You're telling me? Let's turn the plane around, boys. We may have to leave here any minute. Now you're talking. About this angle, Artie. Okay. I'll turn on the elevators. Say, it's easy to lift things up here. You notice that? The gravity up here isn't as strong, that's why. That's what I thought. Take this automatic, Artie. You may need it. Well, boys, here goes. Say, this is the path we're on. That means somebody lives up here. Well, I hope it's us. Which way now, Columbus? I'll toss a coin. Heads it's right, tails it's left. Heads. Come on. Wait a minute. I heard something too. Needed to die. I think I'm going to like it up here.
a little nuts yes L let's get out of here wait a minute she's trying to tell us something nothing that i want to hear she's telling us to look out for something but i don't know what Okay for us to split up? I think so. As long as Goku's around, you stick with me. Ain't they? No, lady, now wait a minute. Will you please, please now? What kind of a noise is this? I'll take that. I don't need a bath. Now let me alone. Please, 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 from the earth.
melody. And we need the two. We need the two to make a song of love. Darling, tell me what good, what good are words without a melody? Why, why they're like an earth without a sun above? And although, although my words are sweet, the music, it's in your heart. Our song, it won't be complete if we keep the two apart. But when my words, my words, when they're wedded to your melody. Oh, Jane, where are you, darling? Kiss me. <laughs> well, thank goodness we got rid of those things. You know, I like girls well enough, but I don't like an audience when I'm in dating. <laughs> but outside of that, Mars is a great country, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Seems these people are a little changeable. Boo boo! Ah! 
You're all right now, boys. Here comes my buddy. He'll straighten everything out. Maybe that was the wrong gesture. Try another. Do you know any more gestures? Take it easy. Don't antagonize him. This may be our finish, but let's not make any mistakes. Lenining and Panyang, pull! all of a sudden. That boat was a funny guy. First he hugs me and then he slugs me. I think I've got it. Yeah, that's it. Everybody on Mars has a twin. One of them good, one of them bad. That's what Lulu was trying to tell us when she held up the two fingers. Nothing but twins born up here? Twins? That boko hits like he was a quartet. And we're now in the hands of the bad twins. Well, what are we going to do? We must get out of here at the very latest in four days. Or we won't get back to Earth in time for my appeal. He's an idol. He's idol? With all those girls?
tell you this, boys, but it looks like we're finished. Four days have gone by, and we don't leave here within the next two hours. There's no need of my going back at all. There's not much chance of us leaving here within the next two hours. I'll compromise in the next two years. Where are they? Flowers. Take away. Don't worry, boy. I get you up. And if I can't get you up, I lay down with you.
Mammy, I hate your baby. Here. Take this pill. That ought to fix you up. And I don't feel so good myself. You sure you ain't it right, Singalo? It's here in the book, the fifth day, 5.20, at just 18 and a quarter. If my watch is right, we were to make a bullseye. But is your watch right? To tell you the truth, I don't care whether it is or not. I'm so glad to get off of my, I don't care we land on Uniper. <laughs> Listen, what's wrong? What's the matter? I just happened to think. We may have trouble proving we've been to Mars. We didn't bring anything with us. Well, I brought this bump, but I'm afraid it won't last till we get back. <laughs> <laughs> when I brought this something with me, it's in this box. I show you. Look out, Doc! What's the matter? What is it? I thought he was going to bump into Haley's Comet. Did you see it over here? Jay, let's go. What is oh, it? Who's oh, Haley's oh, Comet? Oh, what do you think? Like the Venus is there. Nothing. 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 That's all I've heard for ten days. Oh, what's the use? It all seems so hopeless. Ah, oh, nothing's hopeless, dear. Don't give up. I'm sorry, dear. Guess I'm nervous. Maybe that's the news. Answer it. That's what I'm about to do. Well, get up, move on, will you? Down at the tribunal. J. 21's appeal comes up next. Is there any news? No news, sir. Oh, Z4, you must do something. Speak for him, won't you? I shall do my best. I'm sorry to say this, LN18, but you may as well know. But if he isn't here now, he won't be here at all. Oh, don't, dear. You must remember, it means just as much to me. F-1991 at Roosevelt Field. Report to Z-4 that his rocket plane has been sighted here, headed for New York. It has been picked up by our escort and should be in the city in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, I want to say something. 
take your hand. Next is a case of LM-18, MT-3 versus J-21. MT-3? Present, Your Honor. J-21? 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 If it please, Your Honor, I should like to speak for a moment in behalf of J-21. I am Z-4. I know you, sir, by reputation. This is a great honor. But the law will not permit me to grant your request. In that case, may I ask that J-21 get a postponement? I object to this, Your Honor. It is contrary to legal procedure. I am sorry to say that such is the case. But some exception should be made for J-21. Before the day is over, this youth who has been to Mars will have returned to the acclaim of the world. Do you wish to wrong such a man? Oh, poppycock. I am sorry, sir. It is out of my hands. In view of the fact that J-21 has not appeared to substantiate his appeal, I hereby grant you MP3... Just a moment, please, Your Honor. One moment, please. To Your Honor, this man, this man, well, Judge, you have no idea. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. This man is the father of my child. What? That's a lie. I know this girl, Your Honor, but she's never been anything. Me? How can you stand there and say that with our little Kate sick at home in her crib? Nonsense. How about those moonlight rides to China, Japan, Italy, Honolulu, Spain, Africa, Peru, Bolivia, all on track nine? What's that? I'll tell you what. You have a daughter, haven't you, Judge? Yes. Then hear my story. I was a child at the time, and he was a man of the world. I was the daughter of a poor farmer, and he was a son of a uh, millionaire. And now I want him to take care of little K-6, and you too. Me? You two's the number of the twin. Just a moment, J-21. Young woman, when did all this happen? Oh, Judge, you can't expect a girl to remember everything. Let's let it go. Which one of these men is the father of your twins? Uh, I did make a few misstatements, Judge, but uh, I wasn't under oath. Catch on. I am beginning to see through this. And under the existing circumstances, I am going to let the matter drop. Present your evidence, J-21. I object, Your Honor. You are about to render a verdict. But I didn't render it. Continue, young man. I've just returned from Mars. He's mad. How do we know he's been to Mars? I demand proof. What you say is correct. Have you that proof? Artie, get single O. All right, Jerry. Come on, 
get along there. You are in my territory now. I'm going to teach you to press pants, clean shoes, and darn stuff. But I shave myself. Good morning, Judge. A man from Mars. And in this connection, I would like to say, Your Honor, that I am not the hero of this adventure. I did my part, and so did RT-42. But the real hero is Single O, who captured this giant single-handed, without a weapon, while we were both unconscious. A likely story. That proves they're lying. How could that shrimp capture a man of this size? Shrimp? Is there no justice? Now, I'm going to show you the funny part about these people from Mars. Look. But get this. You see? It's just mind over. What's the matter? The court is convinced. Well, before an exhibition like that would convince me, I'd shoot myself. Well, you'd be shooting the right man. <laughs> I hereby grant you, J-21, license of marriage to LN-18. <laughs> and I congratulate you. The court is adjourned. Congratulations. Thanks, Ollie. You're up. Is your name Ollie Peterson? It was in 1930. Did you live at 122 Skimmerhorn Street, Brooklyn? You got me right. Did you have a wife, Hilda? And a son, Axel? Yes, I did. Well, I'm your little son, Axel. Papa! <laughs> Climb up on my knees, sonny boy. 